Hello my fellow welders, Tyler Gledhill here. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing preheat, why it's important and how it prevents hydrogen cracking, so stick around. The very first misconception about preheat that I want to address is that it's not used to pull moisture out of the material. Now there is times where there's moisture on the material, if your metal's been rained on or there's snow sitting on it. In those times, preheat's absolutely appropriate to be used to dry the surface of the material off. If your steel is already dry and you preheat it and you see moisture that appears to be coming out of it, that moisture's not coming out of the steel itself. That moisture's caused by condensation. That condensation is created during the combustion process and that's why you see water appear to be coming out of your material. It's not actually coming out of your material, it's just part of the combustion process of either natural gas or propane that's being used to preheat. I'm asked almost on a daily basis, what is the purpose of preheat and why do we do it? Well the goal of preheat is to slow the cooling rate of the weld after it's completed. So we heat the weld up so the entire component takes longer to cool down after the weld's completed. This allows hydrogen more time to diffuse. When the weld is hot, the hydrogen diffuses easily. But as it cools down, that hydrogen forms on the grain boundaries, often in the heat affected zone. As that hydrogen begins to form, it creates stress. That stress can lead to hydrogen cracking. How can I completely eliminate hydrogen cracking? Well, there's three things needed for hydrogen cracking. The first being a source of hydrogen. Now, hydrogen can be found in the air in some areas, here in West Texas, there's some kids in the third grade that have never seen rain. So moisture in the air isn't really a problem here. Moisture is found in the flux that cover the cellulosic rods, such as E6010 and E8010. The second thing that's needed is constraint. Now in the pipeline industry, there's always constraint whenever you're welding pipe. This is because when you weld one side of the pipe, it creates tension on the other. The third thing that's needed is a susceptible grain structure. The material has to have a high enough hardenability that when the hydrogen forms, it causes it to crack. If you can eliminate any one of these three things, you will completely eliminate hydrogen cracking. This is often done by using a low hydrogen process, such as 7018 rods that have been in a rod oven, or TIG welding. These processes eliminate the hydrogen that is often found in cellulosic rods. But any one of the three things that are required for hydrogen cracking a source of hydrogen, constraint, and a susceptible grain structure. If any one of those three things can be eliminated, you will completely eliminate hydrogen cracking in your welds.